Welcome to today's chat about outlier identification in educational research. So we're gonna, going to go right into it. I have a shared screen here showing an SPSS database uh, with several variables from age, IQ, memory span, and reading ability. In this data set, we have 20 participants that are depicted here. It's fictitious. We're just using it to uh, sort of learn the process of how to identify outliers. Um, and first off, we have, to, uh, we have to know whether or not the data set is, um, is a normative data set. Uh, has, is the information, uh, does it fall according to a bell curve or a Gaussian curve? So what we're going to do first is we're going to go into analyze, descriptive statistics, and explore. Within the explore menu, uh, we're going to <clears throat> uh, push over the IQ into the dependent list, which is something that we're going to look at, click plots, and then under plots, we want to make sure that the histogram <clears throat> is uh, indicated here, only the histogram is necessary. And then under statistics, we're going to look at outliers and percentiles, so we'll click that continue. We'll say okay and we'll see what the output looks like here. So first off, what we wanna do is make sure that of these 20 cases, uh, all the data is valid there, nothing is missing, so that's good. We're going to continue <clears throat> and basically look at the upper and, and lower limits at the 25, 25th percentile and the 75th percentile of this data set. It says right down the middle, average IQ for this class of students is 99. We know that 100 is a, is the average IQ theoretically for everyone on, you know, on the planet. So this seems pretty close to that. Um, if we look again at the 25th and 75th percentile, we can do some simple math to determine uh, whether any of these um, IQ numbers for the students fall and can be classified as outliers. We also wanna look at the histogram here <clears throat> and it basically shows you, if you look at it, uh, a very close to a bell curve hovering right around that 100 mark that we talked about. It's really at the 99 uh, point value. We look at the 21st, 25th percentile, it's 92.5. Uh, so that would be right around <clears throat> here or so. So any, anything that falls on this side is lower than the 25th percentile. And then anything above a 101 falls above the 75th percentile in this class of students, which would be characterized as right here. Also, we can look at uh, this box and whisker plot, <clears throat> and again, we see that the, uh, that the mean is very close to the 100 number that one would be looking for in a data set of IQ to sort of make some determinations about uh, whether or not the, uh, the uh, data <clears throat> is uh, normalized. So what we can do here is we can do, <clears throat> we can pull up a calculator, and I'll push that over here. And essentially, we're going to uh, subtract the uh, 25th percentile from the 75th percentile. So we will say two, uh, 101 minus 92.5 equals 8.5. And then we're going to multiply 8.5 times a G variable, or a G value rather. And the G value that we want to use is actually 2.2. There's a lot of literature on the internet and in uh, some of the original articles talking about outlier identification that used to use 1.5. However, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's come, to, come to be known that using a 1.5 will oftentimes uh, render uh, false positives or type one errors. And so we're going to use 2.2 for our purposes to make sure, to make sure that we don't uh, have an over-representation of these um, outliers. So we come up with 18.7. So we're going to record that in our notes. And then what we want to do is take uh, this, this lower limit of 92.5 on the 25th percentile and subtract 18.7 from that number. And we get 73.8. And if we go back to our data set, do any of them fall below 73.8. We can look right here, the lowest value is actually 88, so there would be no outliers on this um, normal curve be, uh, on the low end because none fall below 
a 73.8. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add 18.7, 18.7 plus, and we go to the 75th percentile, a 101, which is 119.7. So if we go back to the original raw data, were there any numbers that fell above a 119.7? The highest was a 107, so the answer there is no. So that is how we make the determination that in this particular data set, there were no uh, outliers found in this normal distribution.